right, just a quick update. Uh, that's all this is, no details, but the uh, Persian, a fairly large force, this army, but led by a kind of crappy leader, that's all I had, uh, moved down to try to besiege Smyrna. And the um, Macedonian force decided to, I was, I was kind of going back and forth whether to do this because they just had a slight edge in numbers because of all the recruits that the Persians were able to do with all that money. Uh, but they went to intercept. There was another smaller army here um, and I wasn't going to use that. I thought about moving that first, but then they would have intercepted that for sure. So uh, they intercepted, this should be back up here, left the siege, so that's broken, but um, the odds weren't very good down here yet anyway. And just, I, this, this force was crushed, mainly because of some bad die rolls. Um, there was a there was a slight advantage um, to start with, and then I think there was some sevens and eight roll eight rolls. There was a plus two on the die for the Macedonian, and then even up uh, even up die roll for the Persians. And um, once the ball started rolling, it, <laughs> it didn't stop. They tried retreating three times. They did not roll a successful retreat until the third time by then that's all that was left of their force so now we're back with this big force pool and we'll have to recruit again but the good thing is they have uh, 21 talents left so that is going to go a long ways to keeping the persians alive i guess that's why i took that risk too um i think eventually with that that much treasury that the Persians will be able to wear the Macedonian force down even though that huge battle took place. All right. Okay, update on the September Macedonian turn. Well, actually, yeah, <laughs> both, both the Persian and the Macedonian. Um, after the Macedonians defeated them here, previous turn in August, they retreated, um, then they rebuilt their army, basically, and the Persians came down and attacked here. Um, Macedonians were uh, unable to retreat, and they were whittled down to a couple hoplite units left. Um, this is Persians have. They lost uh, some cavalry, but with the combined armies, that's what we have for Macedonia. Uh, it's not enough really to do a whole lot besides try to withstand some sieges. We, on we only have two victory points. We'd need one more for a draw and three more for, I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to get here, but we don't have enough force to lay siege to that because the intrinsic value on a bee city is so big. Um, and if we did throw everything at, they, they would just come up. So I might have to look at uh, if there's any possibility of the Macedonians playing this out. Um, we'll see. But right now they're hunkered down with what they have left in Smyrna. All right, every time I think this is, I'm gonna call this game for one side or the other, uh, I changed my mind. So this is the way it's played out um, up to the January term, turn, and I've done, this is after I've done all the January steps, I've done the administrative steps, um, and I'm at the faction one campaign so the Persians have yet to move in January but uh, this is what's transpired up to this point so um, basically the Macedonians abandoned this area and they retreated up 
to this city captured the, that caused the city to surrender caused the city to surrender I've got a little garrison here um, and then the main army is there I was able to recruit January I, I get some money from t um, well normally it's taxation but in this scenario they just give you the 12 talents uh, for the Macedonian intent for Persian uh, so I built what I could here, um, which is only mercenaries can be built there. And then the rest of the troops were rebuilt up here, including another fleet. I have a leader. And um, some hoplites, I think, a, a, a cavalry unit. There's back up here. That's what's that point system. Three hoplite units. And I should be able to transport those to wherever I need to in the upcoming turns. And then also the Persians, because um, the Macedonians abandoned Ephesus, they were able to go here, build a ship with a leader and then moved to here to be ready for January. And then they built the Rhodos because they have to be built in certain places. This one has to be, oops, this is the wrong place. <sighs> Should be over here. Um, that's a victory point location. Yeah, Rhodos is over here. So they um, moved to here and built the Rhodos three trireme, so three strength points should come in handy so in some ways we're back to square one except Persians are gonna have the upper hand um, as they always have in cavalry um, they're gonna be a little lacking in leadership they only have a one strategy and the Macedonians still have three uh, but Macedonians are basically back at the f initial strength, um, they only have two out of the three fleets, though, and they only have one talent left, whereas Persia has nine talents left over. So with that big influx in August with all those talents from that uh, poison incident, uh, that really makes them a little bit more of a tough nut to crack. Um, so as of right now, technically it's a draw because this is worth two. And now it's going to be back to the little cat and mouse affair because they could just sit up here. They could bring this fleet over here and re or uh, yeah, this, this army could go here, reinforce here. This reinforcement could come here by naval transport and then force the Persians to do something to eliminate the draw possibility. Right now, I don't I think it's hard for the Macedonian side to actually get to five. Um, I just don't see them coming back down here again, but we'll see how that plays out. But this is, again, this, um, is a game where you have to assume that fortunes are going to change and um, the status quo is not necessarily going to remain that that way for um, the turns to come so there's always something around the corner um, of course i've made tactical errors and strategic errors but it it's just fun trying trying different things um, and this is just one scenario. There's three more uh, shorter scenarios, and then there's a campaign game, so lots here. All right, we'll see what happens. Okay, update on the January, February turns. Um, we're kind of sitting tight until March, and then it gets a little bit less crazy for um, foraging. It's only minus two, like it is in. April. 
So, the situation is right now, um, Persians split into two forces. And I'm um, a little bit lesser force here, just in case um, Macedonians decide to come back into this area. Um, we have two fleets now guarding this pass, this channel. So um, if they decide, they have two fleets up here, if they decide to come down through this pass, we can intercept and um, <clears throat> Macedonians are at greater risk because they're going to be transporting troops and these will be um, um, empty. So they'll just be attacking and they have talents to replace the naval units and Macedonians don't, so we'll see what happens with that. Well, a little update on up to the May turn. Uh, <clears throat> the Persian army that had been here moved up to here and captured, recaptured um, Descleon, Descleon? Um, eliminated about seven size points worth of Macedonian units. So now at this point, well, after the Persian turn, um, it would have been a Persian victory at this point because they only have two left here on the Macedonian side. <clears throat> and then the Macedonians just decided that they had to go for it. Um, because they really couldn't contend with that army. But, by the way, the Persians did move the Smyrna army up to here, thinking that they're going to have to go one way or the other by land, and they weren't going to dare go through this um, channel here to get to the south. Uh, but it kind of forced Macedonians' hand because they really couldn't compete with either army, um, maybe this one, um, but it, it, the attrition would have would have whittled them down so, and they can't afford to recruit too much more. So <clears throat> they left a garrison here to keep it from revolting. It is worth two, so it kind of forces the Persian player to recapture this, at least we use some forces to recapture. And then they just took the risk and they went down this channel. And fortunately for them, they have to roll eight, nine, or 10. And they they rolled, they couldn't roll until here because naval units have a two hex reaction range and you can only, um, well, the, they started, you can only um, go according to the movement points used um, in that range. So they tried here, 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 and they failed on every roll. If they had been successful, um, Macedonia, most Macedonian army probably would have been um, whittled back to kind of an ineffective force because if you lose naval size points, you're going to lose, um, I think it's one to four. So if you, for every size point of naval, you're going to lose four size points, um, depending on how much you're carrying. In any case, they, they made it down all the way down to here, to Ephesus. Um, disembarked, had to do their supply check, no problem. Um, and then they took a chance and rolled a nine, I think, or eight or nine on the assault table. They did have a couple of um, plus die roll modifiers. Uh, 
because they do have a siege train. And um, then took the city. So now technically they have four. So they're at um, one short of victory. So if they captured this one, they'd have five. But this one's probably going to fall. Um, but it's just a matter of what what's what the Persians can do um, to recapture here, um, or possibly prevent the capture of this. Um, now the shoes on the other foot because if they use any naval units to transport past here, then the uh, Macedonians can come out and possibly intercept. So on to the next turns. Okay, I stand corrected. Um, I had to change this. Uh, this is not captured yet because I don't get the plus one for the siege train because I can't have a siege train. I didn't have enough naval points. Um, I would need um, almost a whole, each one of these is four, can take, take, take four size points, but a siege train is 12 size points, so I'd need uh, one, a fleet and a half to do that. So no siege train and no capture. Um, okay, now we're good. All right, we are... Um, just finished the August term. There's technically four terms left. Um, might actually end up playing the whole the whole game on this. Uh, a lot has happened since the Macedonian force, which is pretty much all they have left. This is kind of desperation. Um, capture both these two, two cities. They're each worth one victory point chased off this army, although it's now it's replenished. That's the one thing about the Persians, they, with that treasury, they're down to four talents, but basically throughout this year, they've been able to replenish their forces um, anytime they have some losses in battle. Although the morale of the Persians are down to 40, so that it does affect a few things. Um, and then the the Macedonian army went down to here. I should have done this one before. Um, Halicarnassus, Halicarnassus is only a class C city. If you see here, it is a port, but it's a class C city. And um, that means it's only got a 10 intrinsic defense, whereas this one is 20. So... Uh, this is a much easier one. I can get two to one odds here. I can only get one on here. So um, this I managed to get a surrender on because I had a plus two to the die roll. Um, it's important. I should. This is one of the things I wanted to point out. It's important that if you are doing a, any kind of siege or um, trying to get a surrender on a city. Uh, it's important to have a fleet there if there is a port because there is a minus one to the die roll if the city is a port and it's not under blockade. In other words, you don't have any ships there. Um, so that's, that makes it harder to get the surrender. Um, it also makes it harder under the siege. Uh, so it's good to have, good to have fleets around when you're attacking ports. And then the Persian recaptured here after a couple of turns, this one held out. Um, they were able to assault it and captured this turn. So they got those back. But as of right now, the Macedonians have four victory points. Um, And the, the Persians are going to have three turns left, I think, to counteract that. Um, I don't think, I think I'll, I'll keep 
pushing the Persian fleet down farther, probably put them in Ephesus, um, or maybe re recapture Erythrae. I'll have to recapture that so I can use it as a port again um, and keep the Macedonian army from jumping up the coast because um, I don't think they'd be luck that lucky twice um, not to get inter intercepted. So we'll go on to the September turn. I have depleted Kari is only worth four. I did deplete that one. Um, so it's going to be tougher to get supplies here. Okay, things have come to a head for the Macedonian player. It's a couple turns left in the scenario, and they do have three points, but the Persians were able to come down and combine their armies at Ephesus and now are attacking Miletos. And they have like 48 um, combat points. I think there's like 23 over here. Uh, maybe only 21, 16, 22, 16 plus 22, 25. Ooh, is that not two to one? I just realized I might have enough for three to two. Um, eight, 16, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yeah, it's only 48 on the Persian side. So it's not quite two to one, it's three to two. So maybe a chance. <clears throat> I suppose it would be fun to do this tactical battle. The one thing, um, if you're going to do a lot of tactical battles, that's one reason to have a few more um, commanders in the force, even though they, <clears throat> they might be weaker, they give you more flexibility on the tactical map because you'll be able to give more orders with more commanders. So that's something to think about if you're doing tactical combat. Otherwise, you're just taking the top leader on each side for any modifiers. All right, so modifiers are battle commanders. Um, they're plus one, they're minus one. You subtract three or one from the three, and that's a difference of plus two. Whoops, that's retreat losses. Uh, here, you look at the commander's table. Um, the rating difference plus two. So you get a plus one, and they're going to be minus one when they roll Persians. Um, cavalry is there's no heavy cavalry, but the cavalry um, is definitely more than plus five or five size, and they're more than two to one odds. Uh, so they get plus one for that. Um, so right now, Persians are at zero and the zero die roll and the um, Macedonians are plus one. There's no river. Um, I think, and then this is even up, even though I got here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'd have to have two to one in hoplites slash phalanx um, to make any difference. Skirmishers has to be five. Now, see, there is a two to one ratio here, but it doesn't count because there's only two size points on that side. So, um, one third of the units disrupted me. Nothing. Okay. And the rolls. So, the uh, Persians are rolling on three to two, and Macedonians are on one to two. Very low rolls, and big, the three on each side, so um, no effect. Okay, second round of combat. No retreats. Uh, what do we get here? Five plus one, six and a five. Six on one to two, they lose one. Five, they lose one, so each lose a step. Um, believe the first two rounds you have to lose cavalry if possible. Uh, let me double check. Uh, no, that's skirmishers are first, the first two rounds, and then 
So that was the second round. All right. Keep track of losses over here in case of route, not level. Uh, next roll, third round. Ooh, good roll for the Macedonian side. Eight plus one is nine. And then we got a three, which is no effect. A nine is two losses. And they get to choose. Um, has to be cavalry half of it, but um, yeah, the loss at least once. Is, okay. Um, okay, so they they have to lose half of cavalry. Um, we'll just. I mean, if you flip one, you're gonna. That'll be the two points. So that'll be it. So now where are we at? Um, I should keep a running total here. Let me grab some dice. All right, this gives you a running total here. I've got 24 here, 45 still here. It's gonna take some whittling down. This is gonna be crazy. Okay, next roll. Uh, uh oh, 10 for the first side, five. Still at one to two and three to two. A 10, plus I have to check for leader loss. Um, three losses, ouch. And five, nothing for the Persians. That's gonna hurt. Um, one, two, three. Oh boy. Um, so now we're down eight plus 12, 20, down to 20. I'll do it like this. I'll just put a two over here. Um, now, now it's two to one and it's one to three on the other side. I think I can see which way this is going. Plus I got to go for leader loss. Uh, nope. Okay. Next roll. This is one to three. This is two to one. Actually, no. Let's see, two to one. No, I actually missed it. And they didn't get anything either. Okay. Uh, four and a four. They lose one step. Um, this will be this. Now they're down to 18. I can't do it with two dice. I have to have I have to have um, ten digit dice. But I don't think it's gonna matter. Um, they're down to eighteen. Uh, nine and a six. No, it's third. <sighs> two to one. Six. They lose three. No, oh, two, and a, a nine, and one to three, they lose one. So they lose another two. Um, and they lose one. Um, 10, 14, they're down to 14. And the reason I'm doing this is that it's, it just really doesn't pay to retreat. The game will be over anyway, so uh, maybe I can roll some tens in a row. Who knows? Um, 12, 14, 20, 32, 33, 41. I think uh, it's probably not going to matter too much. Ooh, another, oh, two, nine, well, it's a great roll. 10 for, uh, that gives them two hits, but then they get uh, four hits. Yeah, it's, this is over. Okay. All right, we're gonna call it. Uh, just 
just a very quick synopsis. I, I, I'll get a review in um, in a bit of the overall game because I've tried the oops, I've tried the tactical combat out. Uh, have some thoughts about that. Uh, I did not show that on camera, but um, yeah, this first scenario is it's a good. Uh, I mean, I think it's a good scenario in its own right, but it's a good learning scenario. There's not tons of units on the board to start. Um, it still makes you, it forces you into some decision making um, throughout the game, not just early on. Um, I, I think the biggest thing that happens in this scenario, I haven't looked at the other three, but when when the Persians get that influx of gold or talents, it really just sw swings it all the way to their side because it's really hard for the Macedonians to keep up. Um, every time that I I lost units on the Persian side, I was able to re replace them. The only ones I really didn't use were the ones that were way up. I had to recruit up here. I just didn't bother because um, I really didn't need to. Um, so, they, I mean, I, I'm actually surprised that the Macedonians hung on as long as they did, although they were very lucky to get through this passage um, in the in this last few months coming down here, and it looked like they could do some damage and cause problems, at least trying to go for a draw. I guess if you're... It, it, you might be able to go for the draw as the Macedonian side if you hunker down here, split your forces. Um, the problem is they can only hold, I think, 10 size points. I think that's right. Um, yeah. The class D cities. Yeah, they can hold 10. And, I mean, that's still pretty good because with the... Well, that's not Macedonia, but, I mean, if you take this one, for instance, um, or even one of the other hoplite units, I mean, they're basically the size points for the... Um, Macedonian side on their their big infantry units are are half the size of their combat strength. So, ten size points. Even if you got six size points, you could get twelve added to the intrinsic defense, which is five. So it could make it hard. Maybe to go for the draw, I should have just gotten those two cities, split the two forces, and just forced the Persian to do some sieges um but it in my mind that's not really as fun uh, obviously it's more fun to do some active campaigning down into this area which i did did not succeed but it was fun trying so yeah fun scenario and great way to start um getting into this game i highly recommend it um if you haven't started yet this is a good one to keep going on. All right, I'll post my review um, because I do have some strong thoughts about this system and this, the new game. Um, and you probably can already guess. All right, see you later.